my kitchen's going to be crowded with 150, 250 people in it. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. I love it when the gates open and everyone comes in. This is the best part. Hey, everybody. Oh, look how many kids. Hi, 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 hi. So many kids. This is so great. I got to take a picture. I got to take a picture. I'm going to take everyone's picture. Everyone wave. Hey. Oh, good. I can tell you're paying attention. Oh, the camera guy's waving too. Mike is the camera guy tonight. He's already eating. Quality control is very important. Hey, everybody. Oh, I love seeing in everyone's kitchens. I love seeing all the ceilings. Uh, you can tell when the laptop is bent back because I can see all your ceilings. I can see up your nose. Not really, not really. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? It's so quiet. You're all muted. We set it, we set it on mute when you come in just so it's not, you know, chaos. Um, but I can see you. Karen, I love your glasses. I love them. I'm glasses shopping. I love, oh, Andrea, I like your glasses too. Oh, Julie, another Julie, best name. Ooh, ooh. Oh, two pairs of glasses there. Awesome, and they're both awesome. And you have great hair. I love that some of you are like, you have your aprons on. I don't even, I never think of putting an apron on. I should really think that I do this for a living. Maybe I would think of that. Some of you are so on the ball. Ian, your apron, nice. Hey, Ian. Are you Ian or is it someone else in your house that's Ian? You're Ian? Nice. Good to meet you. You look like you're super prepared. <clears throat> A lot of you, oh, nice lard apron, Karen, awesome. I gotta, I gotta scroll through, I can't see everybody at once. Now I'm getting super close, sorry, sorry. Super close up, just soft focus, soft focus. Nice, hi, hey, Tim, Bernie, hey, Bernie, hey, Debbie, hey, Peggy, Ann, Darlene, Joanne, oh my gosh, this is so great. I can never have this many people in my kitchen without a pandemic. It's one of those silver linings, right? Right, Angela? Yeah, I like your head fan. I love getting to peek into everyone's kitchens. And you get to see in my kitchen. Awesome, okay, so there's 200, oh, 203 people in here. Too many cooks in the kitchen, impossible. This is great. So we have um, Paula from Calgary Co-op. Well, Paula is not technically from Calgary Co-op, but she's she's doing the um, the, the questions, fielding questions, because there's already 27 chat comments. And because my eyes are starting to, you know, I can't see three feet away, I can't see the fine print. So she's going to field questions for me. Um, Paula, are you there? I'm here. Hello. Can't hey. wait for this. I can't wait for it either. So she's letting people in and she's going to field the, the questions because I know you'll have questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer them or it'll be super embarrassing. Right, Robert's family? Hey, you're paying attention. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Did I, did I make you shy? Ian, do you have all your ingredients ready? You do, I knew it, I could tell. <clears throat> what about you, Julian Child? <laughs> She's got her bowl, nice. I see a lot of scurrying around the kitchen. That was me about five minutes ago. I had to look at my recipe because I never make the same thing twice. Karen, what is that, Karen? What did you hold up? Oh, is that just your meat? Oh, you're marinating it already. Are you marinating it already? You can unmute yourself and answer if you want. 
do you know what I discovered recently? If you touch your space bar, if you hold your space, oh, you might be, you might be locked. You might be muted. I don't know. I don't know what the settings are because I'm not controlling it. But I just recently learned that if you touch your space bar, it'll unmute you while you're holding your space bar and then you let it go and it mutes you again. So you don't have to worry about remembering. So if you feel like trying that, I don't know. I don't know if there's a setting that you're just muted, but sorry if you are. Anyway, some of you may be pre-marinating your meat. I'm doing all this in real time. So how many of you were at the last class? What, what did we make last class? Something with balsamic vinaigrette. Yeah, you guys were there, Anita? No, did you? Okay, who, who witnessed me making the vinaigrette without the lid on the jar? So I was using like a syrup jar because there was stuff piled on the where my jars are. So I was like, oh, I'll just use a syrup jar. Anyway, the lid wasn't on and I shook it up and it went like the ceiling was covered, like the walls, me, my hair, my face, all my clothes. And of course they were videotaping it. I've got a super fancy camera, like actual camera guy. You can't see him. I can't even turn the camera around to face him because he is the camera. Anyway, they caught it all on video. There is no hiding. All right, so shall we get started? Is everybody in? Do you think Paula, is everybody in? Everybody's here. Yeah, we can get Oh, everyone's here. Okay, so I'll stop rambling. I was kind of making sure everyone was in. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm in Ramsey. Anyone in Ramsey? Inglewood? Any neighbors? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, how's it going? Oh my gosh, so funny. I always see familiar faces. I just want to like pull up a chair and catch up with you. Um, so welcome to my kitchen and uh, and thanks for joining us. This this is a super fun series. This Calgary Co-op. I don't even know what it's called. Dinner class. What is it called, Paula? Dinner class cooking with Julie. Something. Anyway, that's it. That's it. Okay, I got it. Nice. Um, it's been really fun to cook with you guys in your kitchens. And some of you I know are not cooking, you're just watching and that's totally cool. You can do that. Um, we picked some recipes that were fairly simple to do in real time and um, that don't cost too much and that kind of make a, a complete meal. So I love that we're all gonna cook dinner together and then we're gonna kind of eat together because we're eating the same thing. Sorry, Natasha's looking at her watch. Like, I know, I know I talk too much. Um, so we're gonna get cooking. So we're making bulgogi beef, which is like a stir fry. And sorry, I keep looking at, I'm looking at you guys because you're on the laptop beside the camera and I want, I like seeing your faces, but I'll try and talk to the camera. Um, so we're gonna make bulgogi beef, uh, which is a Korean beef. You can make it spicy if you wanna add some chilies, if you wanna add some sriracha, you don't have to. Uh, it's a little bit sweet and salty and savory and all those good things. So, um, so it's really fast to make once we get the, the meat sliced and marinated and, um, and ready to go. It cooks in like five minutes. So timing is everything though, right? It's like timing the dessert and the rice and the bulgogi beef. Um, so what we're going to do is get the, the beef in the marinade first because you can't over marinate beef. You can't mar over mar marinate meat. You can over marinate seafood. You want to leave seafood in the marinade for very little time because the citrus will cook it. Um, but with beef and chicken and pork, you can marinate it for a long time. So <clears throat> are you ready? Yeah. So weirdly quiet. And I can see all you guys, I can see you. So I'm just going to pretend I hear you laughing at my jokes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to fully wing it. Feel free to follow the recipe exactly, but I always free pour my marinades because you don't have to be really precise with them. Um, you need some soy sauce for the salt. This is one of my favorite brands. It's nice and dark, but whatever soy sauce you like. So about three tablespoons, like which is about that much. And I know some of you really like to measure and I know there's an opportunity to learn some math um, but you can kind of free pour if you have the, the, the ratios in mind. So I usually do the soy sauce and then a little bit of acid. I've got some lime juice. You could use rice vinegar. You could use lemon juice. Um, I use a little, kind of half as much acid as soy sauce. And then we need a little bit of sweet. So it could be honey. It could be brown sugar. I grabbed this, this is sugar in the rots, turbinado sugar. 
Honestly, I grabbed it because Mike, the camera guy, is in front of the brown sugar. That's the only reason. And the honey is right there, but it's sticky and I'll get all sticky. Although I got to show you Roger's golden syrup. They don't pay me to say this, but this, I also use this. Um, and I use Roger's golden syrup instead of corn syrup in recipes. It's, it's cane syrup versus corn has better flavor. It's got that buttery flavor. So you could use that. Um, I'm just going to use some of this brown sugar, about a tablespoon. Julie, a quick uh, question came in. If somebody has an allergy to sesame oil, is there an alternative they can use? Oh, just leave it out. Just totally leave it out. You don't need to replace it. You don't need to use another oil. I just use it for the flavor. So leave it out. Um, a little bit of sesame oil if you if you like, if you have it, if you don't have it. That's the great thing about, you know, a lot of these recipes, if you're missing one ingredient, you don't have to run to the store and, and get something else um, to replace it. You can kind of use what you have. So some sweeteners, some acid, um, some soy sauce or tamari, you know, for a little bit of salt. Um, ginger. Who knows the ginger peeling ginger with a spoon trick? Oh, yay, Karen. Oh, you know, Sheila? Sheila, is that your name or is it someone else in your house? You're holding up your hand. And she probably doesn't know I'm talking to her because Sheila, who has a family member named Sheila Sakamoto? Yes. Do you know that? You already know that trick? You know that trick. Nice. Can you show everybody? You don't have to show everybody. So the trick isn't really a trick. It's just to use a spoon um, and the spoon peels away the skin of the ginger. You don't get any of the ginger. You don't lose any of the ginger because you're not using a peeler um, and you can't cut yourself. It's actually impossible to cut yourself with a spoon. I've tried. You cannot injure yourself with a spoon. And it's also really easy to get into the nooks and crannies of the ginger with a spoon. It's a little bit easier than using a paring knife or a, a vegetable peeler. So that's my trick. If you've learned one thing tonight and that's it, then there you go. Um, so peel your ginger and grate some in. You don't have to measure it. I like giving measurements because some people like the measurement. If I say, oh, just put in some ginger, I know it'll throw some of you off. So, you know, I don't want to stress you out. So if you want to measure it, you can, but uh, I just sort of free, free grate it into the, to the marinade. You can add garlic if you like. And then if you want it spicy, I know I don't have chilies in the, in the recipe, but if you want to put a pinch of red chili flakes or um, some chili oil would be really good. If you're not using sesame oil, that might be really good. Um, I know there, there are a lot of kids here that might not like spicy and that's cool. You don't have to add spice, but if you, or you could use sriracha, sriracha is good. I've got some, so I'm just gonna add a little bit just to keep you on the edge, add a little something different. Um, okay, so that's the marinade. Do I need this again? No. And then we're gonna take our steak and it could be sirloin or ribeye or anything that, that you can slice really, really thin. We've got a sink full of soapy water here. Oh, and if you want to throw a um, green onion in the marinade too, maybe I'll, I'll chop that next. I have a, a separate cutting board for my steak. And then you want to just kind of thinly slice it. You can actually get pre-sliced steak if you like. And the, I actually really love the butchers at co-op, um, especially Midtown Market. Now that I'm playing favorites, they're great everywhere, but I just have gotten to know the ones at Midtown Market. They love it when I go and say, oh, can you like sp spatchcock a turkey for me? And they're like, sure, they love projects. But uh, if you go and tell them that you're doing like bulgogi beef, they they're super knowledgeable. So they can give you tips. They know what's on sale. They know what'll work. This is a really jiggly table. You getting that, getting that jiggle. Um, so slice it really thinly. Some people partially freeze their, their meat so that they can slice it really thin. Is this in the way? There we go. You can tell me, tell me, move the oil. How are you guys doing? Oh, I see some slicing action. And then I see some people just hanging out. 
the, my favorite though are the couples and the one is sitting drinking the wine and the other one is like madly cooking and shopping slicing julie a couple quick questions is yeah. uh which direction to cut the meat if you have any tips about cutting meat in which direction and oh then, yeah you just um, kind of want to go um against the grain so sort of at a slight angle um, and slice it against the grain and really thin and that, that way it'll cook really quickly in the skillet. If you want to do chicken, you could do chicken the same way. I mean, this is a, a pretty classic marinade. You could do turkey, you could do pork. Um, but uh, bulgogi beef is, is a pretty classic Korean dish. So yeah, just slice it. Just I usually do it on a slight angle. Um, across the grain and you can throw it right in your marinade. So another thing that you that you can do if you have dishes like this that go into marinade, liquid will protect food from freezer burn. So if you get like a big pack of, of steaks, you know, they're cheaper often when you get a, a bigger package. Sometimes what I do is I bring it home, I slice up some of it, put it in marinade, whether it's for satay or for, um, I don't know, anything that you would marinate. Uh, bulgogi beef or a, just a stir fry and then throw half of it in the freezer cook half of it right away and then throw the rest in the freezer and the marinade protects it from freezer burn and um, and also it gives it extra time to marinate in the freezer so you just have this extra flavorful meat and if it's thinly sliced it'll thaw more quickly than a than a solid piece of meat so pork tenderloin would be great i often do pork tenderloin as satay um, in marinade and uh, yeah, and then it, it thaws really quickly. So there's there's another tip. Huh? There's gonna be a test on this later, you guys. Kids, anyone under 12, there's gonna be a test. I don't know if your parents told you. Did they tell you? <laughs> They're not quite sure if I'm joking or not. Okay, so there's the meat. Ta-da! I'm gonna get rid of my meaty cutting board. I mean, I'm not making a salad or anything. I'm just cutting peppers that are going to be cooked with the meat. So, but you know, it's a good, good practice. Okay. So toss your meat around in your marinade. Make sure it all touches some marinade and we're going to just set that aside. And then maybe we'll put our rice on. It's just rice. It's just plain old rice. However you want to do rice. If you have a rice cooker, I have never owned a rice cooker. Actually, that's not true. I did own a rice cooker for about five minutes and I made quinoa in it and it didn't work. And then I gave away my rice cooker and that was the end of it. But I know so many people who love their rice cookers. So however you want to cook your rice, um, I've got some water in my pot already. And Julie, there's a couple of questions about whether or not to rinse your rice before you oh, cook yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, I never rinse my rice. But some people are horrified to hear that and they always rinse their rice. So rinse it if you like. Rinse it if you like. Try it. If you've never tried it and you don't, you don't know, um, try rinsing it. See if you notice a difference. See if you like it better. Um, yeah, I never do. And I always do it on the stovetop. A little bit less than two to one ratio of water to rice. Um, and I bring it to a simmer and add the rice and put the lid on pretty classic way of cooking rice. This is basmati rice. So whatever like rice you like, cook your rice if you want rice. Ian, are you cooking rice? Oh, he's got the peppers already. You're ahead of me. You're cooking rice. Awesome. Do you have a sous chef there? Do you guys know what sous chefs are? They're chefs that are named Sue. No, they're like helper chefs. No, I know they're not. They're like the helpers. I see there's a lot of sous chefs here. It's like the second in command chef. And we've got some cauliflower rice and some oh, coconut, coconut rice as alternatives. Oh, nice. So coconut rice would be good. So if you use some coconut milk, is that what you're doing in your coconut rice? Maybe some cilantro in your rice would be good. Um, and cauliflower rice. I haven't done that in ages. So yeah, you just blitz your cauliflower in a food processor and cook it like rice. Nice. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go flip the screen so I can see a new set of faces for, for a minute, but I, Ian, I see you're standing by with your peppers. That's good. And you have two colors. That's excellent. Oh, more, more kids. 
Oh, Ashley, your kid is not big enough to help. help. Yeah, I am so impressed by the number of people I see making dinner with their babies strapped to them. I remember doing that. Mine is about a foot taller than me now. So that doesn't happen anymore. Okay, I'm popping my rice in. My water is simmering. So I, I just use like a teacup. It doesn't matter what, what the vessel is that you use to measure your rice. If it's a measuring cup or a teacup, as long as you use the same cup to measure your water. And you do, usually it's two to one water to rice, but I use a little bit less water. And um, you'll, get, you'll get a feel depending on the rice that you use. So turn the heat down to low, put the lid on, cook it until you get the, the steam holes and it's, it looks sort of, the grains are a bit separate. Oh my gosh, Sika, Sika family. There's a lot of people in your kitchen. Nice. And you're all cooking together and you all have aprons on. Sweet. That's awesome. I, I love cooking together. I feel like I miss that almost as much as eating with people as cooking with people. Okay. So um, we've got the, oh, did I put the garlic? I didn't put the garlic in. You guys didn't tell me I didn't put the garlic in. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because I already put my grater in the sink, this is what I do sometimes. Oh, this is a papery garlic, had a garlic. I just smash the garlic clove. How did that get back in the way again? Did I put it there? Just smash the garlic clove and toss it in there. I mean, you can kind of roughly chop it, but it's gonna, garlic will do its thing. It will permeate whatever it's in. Okay, we got some garlic in there. And I think I said two or three cloves, but whatever. If, it's potent garlic. Sometimes they're giant, giant cloves. Sometimes they're tiny cloves. So use your discretion. Okay. Now the citrus pots. The recipe is actually, they're called possets, but nobody really knows what a posset is. It's a, it's a UK, it's a British dessert. It's one of my favorite desserts in the world. It's like key lime pie, but without the crust. So how you make it is you heat up the cream and the sugar two cups of cream and about two thirds of a cup of sugar. And then you add uh Oh, is that that's interrupting my audio. Oh, no, did that did you guys stop hearing me when I turned on my induction burner? You stopped hearing me? Yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Oh no, okay, well, I'll use my stove. That's weird. No, no, that's never happened before. I will use the stove. I'm just heating up the cream. I'll make some room. Put the rice on the back. Okay, so two cups of cream and two thirds of a cup of sugar. And I'm gonna heat those up, bring them to a boil. And let it simmer for about three minutes then take it off the heat and stir in citrus juice and it's a the reaction between the the dairy the proteins in the dairy and the citrus will make it thicken and set and you're going to think that it's not going to work everybody thinks it's not going to work it doesn't look right i gave the recipe to my mom for a dinner party years ago and she made it and she was like this is like she must have forgot something because there's no gelatin in here there's no egg um, it turns out kind of like a, a panna cotta, but it's not gelatinous like a panna cotta. Anyway, so she put it in her fridge. She made another dessert. She made like brownies or something. And then when she went to get her brownies, she picked one up in the fridge and it had set. And she was like, she texted me, it worked. I'm like, I know, I told you that it would work. And I just gave my set one to Mike to eat. I should have kept it to show you, but it will be set before we're done. I'll put it in a, a thin, like a, a shallow bowl so it'll set because you got to see it. And I think I ate, I did a class on the weekend and made them and I think I ate, oh no, that's yogurt. I think I ate all of the other ones. Yeah, I totally did because they're so good. Um, so we need some citrus juice, about a third of a cup, which is about two lemons worth. Um, lemons have about three tablespoons of juice in them. 
And Julie, if someone doesn't have whipping cream tonight, can they use a half and half or 10% or a milk or do you recommend the whipping cream? I don't know if half and half will set. I don't, I've never done it with half and half. You could try it. And if it doesn't work, it would be a delicious, like a, like a citrus lassie or something like a milky drink. Um, you know what my, I don't know if, it, I don't know if it will work with half and half, maybe do like a half a batch to see. I don't want you to waste your cream, but I've never done it. Um, with anything but whipping cream. So whipping cream is the grocery store whipping cream is 30, 32 to 36%. This is the, the old fashioned, so it's a little bit higher. Um, if you can find Vital Green Farms cream, which I just used today, I made butter on Instagram, um, you can get it at co-op. And I think the container already went out to the recycling bin, but it's a little, little container. It's made in Picture Butte, Alberta, and it's 52% cream. It's so, I mean, it's 52% milk fat, but it's cream, it's heavy cream, and it's 52% versus 36%. It's so good. You don't even need to whip it. It's like butter almost straight out of the container. It's so good. And they have like sour cream and creme fraiche and yogurt and it's all so good and oh the best chocolate milk which my teenager is already drunk so I can't show you that either but it's so good anyway they sell them all at co-op um and yeah it's the only I think it's the only chain that carries them they're so delicious so if you can find that I think that might even be a little bit too high fat for this the 52 percent um Anyway, yeah, sorry, I can't answer your question. I, I'm not sure if it will work. 18 can you repeat the name of that cream again uh, that you shared, Julie? Sorry? Oh, it's called Vital Green Farms. It's so good. Um, Joe and Carolyn Manns own it. And they are out in Picture Butte, Alberta. And um, they just, it's my favorite dairy. And you can get it at co-op which is super great. But yeah, the, the cream is just, it's amazing. It's so thick. When you whip it, you can whip it and it gets thick, almost like clotted cream. And so I often use it in place of clotted cream. Um, real clotted cream is baked. So you get that kind of crusty top, but just really, really thick cream works for, you know, high tea or afternoon tea. How's it going Sika family? Sorry if I'm not saying your name right. People mispronounce my last name all the time. I, I don't see any fire yet or any, no blood, no emergency vehicles, it's good. Okay, so my cream is boiling. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on here. I know it's gonna mess up my sound, but it's more important for you to see right now than for you to hear. So, whew. will you be able to see inside it? I'll tip it. No, oh, that's okay. I can't see myself anymore. Can you hear me? Or did it mess it up again? A little bit, kind of? Okay. So it's going to boil. I'll mime it. It's going to boil. But when it heats up, when it heats up and starts to boil, it'll boil and it'll start to threaten to overflow the pot. So don't walk away from it. If it starts to rise up, just lift it off the burner. It's kind of exciting. This is the most exciting part. I'm going to cut my peppers while we wait. How are your pet? Oh, this looks very organized too. Okay. Yeah, oh, here, look, look, look. Woo! Huh, 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 huh? Did you see that? Did you see it boil up? 
Or are you too busy cooking? All right, I'll begin in one sec. Here it comes. Here it comes. Whoa. Okay, so it's gonna bubble. It's gonna get really, really hot. Let it go for a couple minutes. Make sure it doesn't overflow. Stir in your juice. I've done this a million times and even I think this is not gonna work. I've done something wrong, but it will, I promise. So I let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna whisk it again. I'm gonna throw it in my little bowls. You can use like wine glasses or like little fancy glasses, whatever you like. Oh, here, these will work. These, oh, there's like ice cream in that one. Whatever you have. We'll use some small ones that they sell. All right, how's everybody doing? There's over a hundred comments in the chat. Awesome, Catherine. So, but no questions? Or if people just like- Can, can they use a walk for the cooking part? Oh yeah, please do. If you have okay. a walk, totally use a walk. Um, a skillet, a wok, whatever you like to cook in. Perfect. I just made dumplings this morning with my bamboo steamer. I think it got put away already. Um, yeah, totally. Woks are great for stir fries. So I'm going to, I'm just cutting up my peppers. If you want to do carrots, if you want to do like broccolini, if you want to do pea pods, you know, whatever you like in your stir fry. It's a great thing about stir fries. And look, I have two colors of peppers too, Ian. Liz, excellent shopping. Never know if I'm using the right name. Look at that. I like seeing on everyone's fridges too, all the pictures. Um, so yeah, chop up your peppers, get your carrots ready if you're doing carrots. Um, I like some green. Oh, I'm going to put some green onion in my marinade too. I need a bigger knife. Here. That's a knife. I like a little bit of green onion in my marinade. And then I'm going to cut some bigger chunks of, of green onion just because um, green onion is more delicate. You don't want to overcook it. When you're doing a stir fry, you cook it really, really quickly and really hot, which is why a wok is great. Um, you can move it around in a wok. You can get the pan really, really hot. I'm going to use, I guess I'll do it over here, hey? Or should I do it here? What do you think? Paula, what do you think? Should I do I it? I think on the stove might be better just because so of the audio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my rice is almost done. Okay, I'm gonna ladle out my citrus pots, possets. You could put a bit of ginger in here would be good. Since I am seeing the ginger on my countertop. Just give it a quick stir as you ladle it out. That's a small one. Look, I'm not even dripping, huh? Which is a good thing because there's a close up camera on me. There we go. Oh, these ones too. You can make big ones, small ones. The more shallow they are, the cooler they'll, the faster they'll cool, faster they'll set. If anyone does use half and half, let me know how it works. Oh, I still have some left. Let's put some in this one. The wine glass, look at. So once this is chilled, you could put berries on top. You could put broken up graham crackers and make like, it's because it's like key lime pie, make like a deconstructed key lime pie kind of dessert. 
I'm going to put a couple of these in the fridge so that maybe you can see one by the end. Oh, I have coconut milk. I could have put it in the rice. I really need to do like a fridge inventory so I know what's in here. Put them all away. How's everybody doing? Is anyone panicking? Everyone's good? Everyone's too busy to answer. Okay. There was a question about whether you could put your um, your citrus juice in right away with the cream or do you have to wait until it boils? Uh, let it boil first. Let it boil for a few couple minutes, two or three minutes, and then turn off the heat, stir in the cream. And then I usually let it sit for a few minutes and then stir it again and divvy it up. I'm sure there's a lot of science behind that. It's just the way I've always done it. Carrots, if you want carrots. These froze in the back of my fridge, but I think they'll still be fine. This one's a little bit funny on the end, so I'm gonna compost it. Um, okay, so we got our veggies. I'm not gonna do all the peppers. And we've got our meat, we've got our rice. Rice looks like it's done. Has it been 20 minutes? I never use a timer. Ta-da, can you see? Yeah, I'm just fluff it with a fork. And then often what I do when I'm cooking grains is put a tea towel underneath to absorb any extra moisture. I'll put the lid on. Okay, so should we do our stir fry? Is everyone ready to, to stir fry? Anyone, is anyone ready to stir fry? Yes, okay, I see some nodding. I see some thumbs up, yay. I don't wanna go too slow or too fast. Sorry for the super close up. Julie, <laughs> she's got her tongue eating. Erica, nice, nice apron. It's too late to put an apron on now, I think. Okay, let's stir fry. So big skillet, whoa, I tripped over my own shoe. Uh, I'm going to use my cast iron skillet just because I'm going to put it in the middle or that this one's too small. I'll put it on here. E, sorry. Um, and this one does not light on its own. I don't know if you guys have heard, but my oven and stove are not fully functional and haven't been since before Christmas. Um, oil, this is just canola oil. It's kind of my go-to. You could use vegetable oil. Um, sometimes I put a bit of sesame oil in too, but we have sesame oil in the marinade, so um, we don't need to add sesame oil. But I like it if I'm doing like um, fried rice or something, I'll do, I'll put sesame oil in the, let's move this over here. I guess it's not in the way, is it? Just leave it there. Sometimes I add sesame oil if I'm doing fried rice or other stir fries. And yeah, we're gonna cook the marinade along with the, um, with the meat. It's all gonna get cooked. Let's plate up some of this rice. You guys are so like, you're so independent. No questions. I guess you're just too busy cooking. Actually, I'm gonna, I don't wanna serve it up too soon. Oh, it's gonna get cold anyway. A little cool down. That's okay. Because the, the stir fry is going to be fairly fast. Nice. And I wish I had put some cilantro in there or something. <clears throat> okay. So you want your pan to be hot, hot pan and hot oil means your food is not gonna stick. 
That's going to be on the test later, okay? Hot pan, hot oil, keeps your food from sticking. If you add meat to a cold pan, it's going to stick. So make sure it's hot first. You can kind of see the oil will get even more liquidy than it is when it's cold. Um, you may have heard some people say if you flick some water at it, but then you could splatter yourself, so don't splatter yourself. You get a sense of when your pan is hot. If you want to take a little piece of meat and just see if you get a sizzle. If you get a sizzle, that's a good sign. all the liquid at once because it's just a little splatter because of the hot hot pan. Um, if you want to thicken your sauce, you could put a little bit of cornstarch in your marinade and that will thicken it up. But I like to just kind of cook it down, reduce it on the stove top. And I also like to not crowd my pan. If you keep it you know, moving around the pan. If it's too crowded, it's going to kind of boil almost. You need to give it some room for the extra moisture to cook off so it gets a little bit dark on the edges. And to grab some sesame seeds for garnish because it looks cool. <laughs> Super close up again. This is my cupboard. Oh, you can't see. The camera is too big. This camera is so big. You guys won't even believe it. How's it going? I see action. One of these days I'm gonna see somebody sitting there eating a pizza, which would be totally okay. Ooh, don't leave your tongs if you have a gas stove don't leave your tongue sitting there because they're gonna get hot okay there's our beef cook the rest of the beef got those chunks of garlic in there too. I'm going to do another container. Hmm. I had a takeout container. Can I get another plate? Because the second batch is going home with Mike. Huh? Huh? So let's do, I'll just, I'll fancily plate it and then I will move it on to, into a takeout container. I get takeout containers from the dollar store um, because I, I cook a lot. And so I'm always bringing stuff to the studio at CBC or pawning them off on my neighbors or bringing some food to my parents. I know everyone's getting tired of their own cooking. I'm getting tired of my own cooking. Who's getting tired of their own cooking? I know we can do takeout, but um, we're cooking a lot more than we ever have. So I, I get takeout containers and I go through them like crazy. So a couple questions, Julie. Uh, first one, what if your beef absorbed all of the marinade and how long should you cook your beef for? It didn't absorb all the marinade. Oh, if theirs did, if theirs did in their pan. Oh, that's okay. Then it'll taste delicious. Yeah, don't worry about it. If, if, if it's all in the beef, that's totally fine. Um, and it depends on how thinly you've, you've cut your beef. It depends on the heat of your pan, like a, a couple minutes, three minutes maybe, because it's thinly sliced. Just stir it around. 
and just until it's cooked. It can be still a little bit pink if you like. Um, so yeah, two minutes. If, you, if your pan is getting dry, you can add more oil. I should have the hood fan on, but it's gonna, is that too loud? I'll, I'll just clean up later. So if you get, do the beef first, you get these brown bits in your pan from the beef, and then you can add the veggies and the liquid from the veggies will help loosen those bits. So I'm going to add the carrots first because they're the denser, densest. The densest? I guess that's a word. They're dense. Um, if your pan is looking dry, just add a little bit more oil. Uh, but the great thing about the veggies is, you know, they, they don't have to be cooked through. They can be just tender, tender crisp, you know. Um, in fact, they're better if they're tender crisp. You don't want to overcook them. I'll do another green onion. If you want to do purple onion or just thinly sliced um, yellow onion, whatever kind of onion you like, or no onion, or chives. Everyone good? Does it smell great in your kitchens? You could do asparagus and asparagus is in season or you could do green beans. Um, honestly, like any vegetable, cauliflower would be good. Any vegetable you like. It's getting so good. <laughs> it's going gonna, gonna to be a film on the camera. The fire department could come. That could be like, there could be a crisis in every episode. Either I don't put the lid on the, the vinaigrette or the fire department comes. I'm actually just gonna stop it though. Cause these are starting to soften. I got the bits from the bottom of the pan. If you want to, um, Add the sauce right to the pan and make sure you cook it, cook it down because it was marinating the meat. So it's gonna cook, it's gonna reduce and kind of coat the vegetables. And if you have some dark bits on the bottom of your pan, that's where a lot of the flavor is. The, the moisture from the vegetables should loosen that, but if you wanna add a splash of um, liquid, water is fine some stock um some booze some wine you can just deglaze the pan with that i'll move it over here there we go ta-da put our veggies on the plate Get all that sauce from the bottom of the pan, which is a bit tricky when you have cast iron that weighs a ton, but we'll get it out. And if it's if it's cooked down, it's really thick, and um, you still want to loosen it up. Just add add a little bit of water to the pan. You want to get all those bits out of there. Huh? Huh? Ta -da. Oh, I'm getting peppers all over the place. They're so slippery. I'll get a spoon. How's everyone doing? It's so quiet. I see some wine being consumed. It's a good sign, unless it's stress wine. We had a question about That's using a, a double boiler for the citrus pots, Julie. Would it be the same scenario with a double boiler? Could you use a double boiler? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, a double boiler will just sort of, it just protects your, whatever it is you're cooking. Um, so yeah, you could use one, but it's not necessary. Ooh, this is heavy. Ta-da. And then if you have some sesame seeds, they look nice on top. Look, two dinners. I just made dinner for two families or one hungry teenager. Although he's already eaten like a whole box of crackers after school. So he may not be hungry. Ta-da! Oh, sorry, zoom in. Ooh, uh, oh, nice, Teresa, look at that. Yours looks better than mine. Okay, now I get to, I get to check out everyone's meals. Teresa, that looks amazing. Okay, I'm scrolling through if you're holding up your plate and I'm not seeing it yet. Oh, sorry, Teresa wins, Todd. Todd, I don't know if you are Todd. Oh, Louise, Louise, that looks amazing. That looks so good. Joanne. Oh, Joanne's ears are set. Nice. Okay, show everybody. Sweet. Monica, amazing. I don't know why I'm always surprised at the end when you've all made dinner. Oh, that looks, oh, Louise. Shady. Shadi? Louis? Louis? Louis. Sorry. Louis. Nice. That's amazing. It looks so good, Angela, amazing. Beepole, amazing. <laughs> oh, 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 I just saw another one. Andrea, nice. Oh, this is so great, I love it. It all looks like dinner, phew, Catherine. Oh, Rebecca, nice, I like your square plate. Cool. Liz, about awesome. if you can um, if you can freeze your beef and veggies after they've been cooked. Can I you freeze your which? The beef and veggies after they've been cooked. If you've got extras left over, can you freeze them? You could, yeah, you totally could freeze them for sure. Yeah, you could make little mini TV dinners with the rice and the beef and the yeah. Yeah, you could freeze them. They'll keep for a few days in the fridge. Okay, I'm gonna check my citrus pot. I can't believe I didn't even think I gave you one and I could have showed it, but, oh, it's not, it's still a bit soft. But you saw, who was it, Louise? Had one that was said already. Liz, I like your shirt. Oh, nice, ooh, nice. Good, dump, good dumping action. Are that, is that the plating? at Liz's house. Randy, nice, that's great, look at that. Glenda, amazing. Oh, you got some greens in there, Glenda. Nice. I was just thinking I have kale. I should have just put the kale in. Carolyn, awesome. Beautiful, Carolyn. You pass, you all pass. Okay, now it's time for the exam, kids. Kids. What is my favorite color? Trick question, I don't have one. Oh, I just saw another zoom in. Mike, nice, excellent. They all look like they're supposed to look. Anita, you guys are already eating, excellent. That's so, so awesome, I'm getting my, I gotta get my phone again. Mike's lighting me because I'm walking all over the kitchen. Oh, Karen, awesome. That's so great. Wait a second, wait a second. I have to Instagram it or it didn't happen. Nice, nice. Amazing, Therese, beautiful. I love it. I love that we're all having the same dinner. Joan, amazing. Jolene, so nice. Andrea, Chantel. I feel like I'm on the romper room and I see Heather and I see Chantal and I see Nikki. G 
you remember the barber room? I just totally dated myself. Melissa, nice. This would also be really good. Oh, Wanda, nice. Oh, nice arrangement, Wanda. Wanda, oh, hi, Wanda. <laughs> I love it. Um, it would make really good lettuce wraps too, all of this, like the meat and the veg and the sauce. Okay, let me see if I can pull out, pause it for you to see. Oh, they're not set yet, but you guys will see them. It's, yeah, it's almost set. You guys will see your own. Oh, who's that, Caitlin? Oh, I miss that age. Sometimes. Hi. Sometimes I don't, I miss that age. <laughs> I do miss that age. Oh, Ian. Oh, let's see, Ian. He's holding his up. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks so good. Well done. I love it. So great. Look, it's steaming too. It's nice and hot. Amazing. Awesome. Well, should we wrap up and let you guys go eat your dinner while it's hot? I'm terrible at wrapping these things up. I just keep going and going. Uh, yeah, Julie, thank you so much. I think it looks great. Oh. Maybe we'll just do a, a quick shot of the meal again and uh, I know there's a sure. lot of hungry Calgarians out there. So thank you so much. Here, let's do a close up. Ooh. Love it. You guys, you all made dinner and dessert. Did you all make dessert? Some of you? Nice. Oh, Chantel, nice. Okay, I can't wait to hear what you think of your dessert and how surprised you'll be when it's actually set. Cool. Thanks, you guys. Well, thanks for joining me. That went so fast. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it's just because I was talking so much. Um, that was so great. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much, Julie. We'll, thank uh, we'll you let to, everyone oh. get to their tables and uh, have a chance to say goodbye. And thanks again. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. It's good to see you all. Bye. Have a good night. See you next time. Turkey meatballs next time. Bye. Bye, Anita. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.